Hi you guys, it's Lindsay here and believe it or not, we are kicking off a whole new calendar year. 2017 is going to start in just a few hours depending on when you watch this and I kind of can't believe it. Um, if you, you may not know this, but 17 is my lucky number. I just, I, I don't really know how it came about. I just started seeing 17s in a lot of random places. Like I would open a book and it would open up to page 217 or I would pause the, um, pause the movie and it would stop at 17 minutes with 17 seconds or something like that. Or I'm always glancing at the clock and it's 217 or 1117. I see it when I'm driving around random places, I'll be behind like a bus and the serial number will have 17 in it. So I don't know why or what that means or, or what it is, but 17 is my lucky number. So I'm kind of taking that all in and taking that as you know, 2017 is going to be a really great year and maybe even a lucky year. I think all of us could use a little luck in our lives, um, especially as we start to think about these resolutions and these goals. Um, striving towards something, working towards something is great, but a little luck is also great, I think. So I have made some sewing resolutions. I've actually made more sewing resolutions than I have regular personal resolutions in my personal life. I don't know. I kind of feel like it's an ongoing thing. It's hard for me to sit down and say, okay, for this whole year, this is what I'm going to try and do. I kind of try and do all those things that one wants to do, you know, be nicer, take better care of yourself, you know, show your loved ones how much you love them more often. All those things I try and do all the time anyways. So maybe that's why it's harder for me to come up with personal resolutions. But I felt like coming up with sewing resolutions was pretty easy. Um, I didn't have a hard time with it at all. I feel like I'm going into my, is this gonna be my fifth year? Am I gonna, I think I'm about to reach my four year sewing anniversary, which means I will start my fifth year of sewing um, this spring. So I know that I've come a really long way, but I also know that I have a long way to go and I appreciate that. That's what I love about sewing so much is that it's like you're just trying to reach Nirvana. Like you're never gonna get to Nirvana. Like you can never reach Nirvana, but you're always striving for that. And just when you think you get close, you discover something that makes you realize how far Nirvana is away. Okay. So for my 2017 resolutions, I came up with five of them because I didn't want there to, I didn't want it to be too overwhelming and I didn't want them to be too obscure. I really wanted to try and make them as specific as possible. I think the, the anagram is for smart, um, specific, measurable, attainable, something for the R and maybe T is timely. I can't remember all of them, but, um, the first three, I think always make a great goal. You know, you can't just say, learn more about sewing, like that's not specific enough. You need to say specifically what you want to learn about or specific ways that you're gonna go about doing it. And that's how to set a goal that you can achieve. Um, so my very first one is really about um, the finishing techniques and also in with that is tailoring techniques. So you may remember, uh, I guess back in October, I had talked about how I wanted to make a tailored jacket. Like I wanted to, to do a, a pea coat or something like that with all the bells and whistles on the inside. Things that you can't see from the outside at all, but what are what make the structure for a, a garment that's gonna last longer, um, that's gonna wear well and look very nice and professional and all of that kind of stuff. So that's really what I'm gonna strive toward um, not just with one project. Yes, the, the tailored coat is a project that I want to complete this year, but I also want to start incorporating little finishing techniques in my garments as well. Like I want to do more Hong Kong seams. Um, I want to incorporate those into some, some more of my garments. I want to, you know, do different things with facings and different things with pocket linings and, you know, really just take I mean, my garments on the inside, they look professional. A lot of them are serged, which is kind of like a shortcut way of finishing off 
raw edges and stuff and um, I dabbled with French seams a little bit whenever I was doing the um, like some of my rayon chalet projects um, and I just want to do more of that I want to find those applications um, that are that when applied to the right kind of fabric or the right garment really just take it to another level like I want to look inside my garments and have them be just as beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside and so like I said that comes with you know Hong Kong finishing that comes with figuring out new um, finishing techniques for facings um, even like casings and elastic waistbands like I'm down with all of those things but I just want them to look really beautiful on the inside too so that's my first resolution um, my second one is to perfect a pants sloper so as you know my story with pants and pants patterns goes way back um, I probably started I probably made my first pair of pants the second year I was sewing and that was a huge mistake because I had no idea about a full seat adjustment. I had no idea that about my body, none of those things. Um, now I have the knowledge, like I know what I need to do. I just need to put it to work and actually draft up a pants sloper, you know, make all the muslins and then make it in a, in a, gar in a fashion fabric that I can actually wear. So I just want to make one perfect pair of pants that I feel like fits me really well and you know pants that I don't feel like I can get in the stores. Um, I know that there are most of the stores I can't even it's not even worth it for me to try on pants because no matter if it's marketed as curvy or any of that it, it just it's not curvy enough I guess um so the closest I've got is um the Ann Taylor has a pant called the Kate um and that's the closest I've ever gotten they have a very generous seat in there but it's still not perfect I don't feel like the crotch length is long enough especially in the back um so I feel like it's very very close and it's gotten me by for the past year um but I want to make my own pants that fit really really well so that's number two on my list number three is just to get the stash under control like I guess what it comes down to is I'm an impulse buyer. It's not really in my regular life. Like I'll do all the research and things like that for regular things. I don't even go out and buy clothes impulsively. But when it comes to fabric and patterns, like I see something and I just have to have it. And it just goes in my cart and shows up here and then goes into my fabric pantry and there it sits. Um, what I really want to do is utilize my Colette sewing planner more and really plan out projects and then only buy what I need for that project and then actually make the projects that I plan on making. Do any of y'all do that? Do y'all think, okay, I've got this fabric for this pattern, you've done deal, I bought them for each other and then it all shows up here and then you're like, oh, I don't know maybe that would be good for something else or maybe I can make that pattern out of something else and then they both just end up sitting there unmade. I do that all the time. So so the sewing resolution what it really comes down to is only buying things that I am actually going to make something with and then making the things that I buy. Um, I think that if I were to have stuck to the plans that I had in my head maybe 25% of what is in there would be in my closet and not in the pantry. So, so yeah, you got to get the stash under control. And along with that is to get the work in progress stash under control as well. I have this habit of finishing a project like 90% almost to where I can try it on. And then after I try it on, like the allure of making it has worn off. Is that strange? And then it goes into like a work in progress. Like I have so many things in there that just need a hem or just need a zipper or something like that. Now granted there are some things in there that are a disaster that I think that I can salvage somehow and maybe I just need to get real with myself that I'm never going to be able to salvage that. I need to just donate it if it can be donated or just toss it. Um, but the work in progress pile, I want it to have zero 
projects in there. I want to get it all down to zero. And then on top of that, I don't ever want to have a work in progress pile ever again. I want to finish everything that I start, um, which is a big task for me. I don't know why that's so hard. It seems like common sense. You start making something and you just finish it so you can wear it. But, um, but yeah, I don't know it. I don't do that. Um, so I need to, I need to work on that, um, work on getting the work in progress pile gone and then focus on not adding anything to it ever again. That seems like it's going to be the hardest one out of all of them. I think, I don't know. That one should be interesting. We'll check, check back with me in 12 months. We'll see how things go. Um, and then the last one is to kind of learn more and broaden my horizons. I feel like in 2016, I did a really good job of trying new fabrics, trying fabrics I've never heard of before, um, trying applications I've never heard of before. I did my first um, full, I did my first pattern adjustment at all in 2016. My first full seat adjustment, I think I did a small bust adjustment at one point. Um, uh, if you remember when I did the shorts, the um, Chi Town Chino shorts, that was really the first full seat adjustment I had ever done. Um, so I want to explore those techniques more and just learn more about um, just all aspects of sewing, sewing different kinds of garments like lingerie or like the tailored coat that I've been talking about, um, taking craftsy classes and um, checking out more books from the library that I really do enjoy doing that. Um, so just doing a little bit more of that and just just kind of like expanding my knowledge base, even if I don't apply it to anything, even if it doesn't like become a project, at least I can learn what there is to learn about different aspects of sewing or different fabrics or different applications and things like that. So that's my fifth one there. So there you have it. Now that I've kind of said it all out loud, it kind of does seem like a lot, even though it's only five things, I feel like it's kind of five big things. Um, five things that I know is going to take a lot of time. Um, so we'll see. I, I am excited about it. I'm excited about 2017. I'm excited about continuing to sew for another year. Um, you know, adding another notch to my belt, I guess. So, I mean, yeah, let me know what you guys are looking forward to in 2017 when it comes to your sewing. If it's not a resolution, is it a certain project or, or are you making a list of resolutions too? Um, I would love to hear some of what you guys have going on out there and we can all support each other in trying to better ourselves for this little hobby that, that we all love so much. So here's to just a really great, prosperous, wonderful 2017 with a little bit of luck, if that's okay to ask for that. And um, until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye.